Hey everyone, we are live at five. I'm Paul Wontora. And I'm Beth Stevens. Hey Beth, it's five o'clock. Like and, on time. And it's we're great. Alive. It's great. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And we have an amazing Broadway legend Broadway today. Legend. Leroy Reams is here. <laughs> Fantastic. He's doing he's a new so show. He's so humble he didn't applaud for himself. I love him. <laughs> Uh, he's at Feinstein's 54 Below doing a really fun uh, sort of Broadway history show. We're going to talk about that. Very excited about that. But let's start with some, some sort of bad news. Yeah, it's been a difficult day for a lot of reasons, but here's a theater reason. When Pigs Fly, the Howard Crabtree... Howard Crabtree's When Pigs Fly. Howard Crabtree's, thank you for That's the That's a full edit. title. When Pigs Fly has been canceled. I know, it's so crazy. So it was supposed to start very soon on October 11th at Stage 42. They had just last week announced a five-day delay. Yeah. They said they had a shortfall in their investment. Oh, money, money, money. money. money well, yeah. that's a big theater, too. So, yeah, so a lot of people are out of work, unfortunately. And um, we were, I was really looking forward to seeing what Dennis Jones, who was directed, Tony Nominee, yes, 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 was going to direct and choreograph. So we're not going to get a chance and to see that. And the Bob Mackie costumes. Everyone, I've, I've already heard you know, that the Bob Mackie costumes were going to be amazing. I have such great memories of this show from the 90s, from the original production. So I was really And it ran excited. for a very long time. It was a big hit. So. Yeah, I was really excited to see it again. But... Unfortunately, that's showbiz. That's showbiz. Anyway, womp womp. sad. Womp yeah. womp. Uh, so. Now good news. Now we're moving on. Derek Klenna <laughs> surprised us all and announced an engagement yesterday. Derek, of course, who uh, is in Anastasia, the star of Anastasia, he uh, proposed to his longtime girlfriend, Alicia Scriven. Uh, they apparently met when they were in UCLA together. Uh, you've, you've seen photos of her on the red carpet with him. She's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. They're like stupidly gorgeous <laughs> together. But we got the scoop. So what happened was they Hello. made up yesterday, they made a plan. They were going to go apple picking, as you do this time of year. Yes. And before they left their apartment, he made their favorite breakfast, which is bacon avocado toast. Now, I've had avocado toast. I haven't had bacon avocado toast. But what a fabulous idea. I need this recipe. <laughs> uh, and right before they were going to walk out, he popped out a, a bouquet of sunflowers. Okay her favorite flower, and a poem, <gasps> thank you Leroy and Matt, a poem <laughs> about their gasping. eight amazing years together, and he got down on one knee, presented the avocado toast with bacon and a ring on top. I mean. And they're engaged, and I think it's adorable. Gentlemen, take note, this is how you do it. Congratulations, I'm yes, so excited. Best wishes. Sunflower is also awesome. it's not. Yeah. So <laughs> it's off the market, ladies and gentlemen. Such a sweet guy, too, yes. so congratulations. Very big news. Um, okay, so we, this is Culturalist, tomorrow is Mean Girls Day. Yes, well, I, I didn't, yeah, I forgot that was a thing. Day. It's a, fi it's a, th oh, it's it's a thing. It's such a big thing. So we asked you your top 10 Broadway Mean Girls. We mean characters, we don't want to hear about people's personal lives. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you the top three because you're watching and you're special. I'll give them to you in reverse order, yeah. ready? Build Let's up to it. I'll build up to it. Yeah. Number three, Ms. Hannigan from Annie. Yeah, Super yeah, mean. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, number two, Velma Von Tussle from Hairspray. Yes. She's not nice. No. And number one, The Witch from Into the Woods. Well. She's got a lot going on. Yeah. She's got a lot going on. So that, that was our top ten from the culture. Those are the so mean girls. The I'm mean sure girl. Sondheim never thought of The Witch as a mean girl. <laughs> but now he will. Now he will from for, forevermore. <laughs> so Kelly O'Hara, you know her. I do. <laughs> She's fantastic. She's a Tony winner. Tony winner. And how many nominations? A lot. Six, seven, eight, Six, seven, eight nine. Eight. nine couple more years give her a couple more years anyway now she has her own center of performing arts in elk city oklahoma she's an oklahoma girl and uh she has her own performing arts center and she put up an amazing photo of her um leaping for joy on social media in front of the big sign and it's it's a thing so so it'll be like i'll meet you at the kelly o'hara yeah i'll see you at the kelly o'hara it's gonna be like that th oh yeah. The, yeah so that is just they don't just do kelly o'hara titles do they i don't know what the abbreviation is but i'm sure someone will come up with it. And no, I mean the shows at the Performing Arts Center. Oh, they can only do, Kel well, she's done a lot of shows, so I guess they could do well, it. Actually. Just, they can only do shows Kelly has done. Anyway, so that's exciting. Congratulations, Kelly O'Hara. Um, also on the site today, we have the Waitress National Tour, singing their little hearts out. Yeah. Desi Oakley, ba Brian Sankart. We have the BAA Report, with your favorite shows, Love Never Dies, School um. of Rock, Les Mis, I mean the best stuff ever. And we have a really fun picture of Billy Crudup, and David Kale and you Lisa saw Billy Crudup today. I did. He is so charming and hilarious. He's yeah. in a show called Harry Clark, which is in rehearsal now, and that will be at the Vineyard in about a week and a half. Cool. Yeah. And is he excited for it? No, he's really. <laughs> he actually sounds a little nervous. It's a solo show, 
It's a That's sexy scary. thriller solo show. He's got a, he's leading a double life. You know who else is doing a solo show? Leroy Rains. <laughs> nice we'll be, segue. We'll be right back after this break. Broadway's Come From Away is a best musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. Time is running out to see War Paint, starring two-time Tony Award winners Patti LuPone and Christine Ebersole. Now through December 30th only. The New York Times says these deliciously paired Broadway legends are knockouts. These are two star turns for the ages. Don't miss your last chance to see Broadway's once-in-a-lifetime event, War Paint. Throw your rocks at me. Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raves the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles. An uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Love, sugar, butter, flour. Hey guys, we are back with Leroy Reams, Broadway icon, legend. What do you prefer to be called? A Broadway what? Oh, uh, listen, anything that has to do with the theater, you can call me anything. And God knows I've been called a lot. <laughs> I have so much trouble. If I, would, if I started over, I would have changed my name because the Reams became a problem. Because I would walk in and they would say, any relation to Harry? And I walk in and they say, Leroy Reams. Harry do Reams, you? by the way, is a big porn star, uh, everybody. Yes, I, had, I used to say, yes, I'm the one with the talent above the waist. So I used to go. I used to go through all of those. T and then in school, it was always Leroy is back in jail again, and bad, bad Leroy Brown. Wow. Okay. I've gone. I've run the gamut. So if you're going to re redo your name today, what would you make it? I would make it Lee Rogers, like Roy and Ginger. Lee Rogers. That would I be easy, it. but they probably would still misspell it. So <laughs> is it with a D or with a G? You know, we all have the problems. <laughs> Lee Rogers. Okay. Can I just remind everybody about your amazing career? Thank because you. Because I was reminding myself. And I, and I get a little flustered just thinking about it. But let's just remind the kids, there's a lot of kids out there on the internet, let's make sure that they're educated on your amazing resume. So Broadway debut in what? Sweet Charity. Sweet Charity, original cast. Uh, yes, in the ensemble, ensemble, but I played a very small part called Young Spanish Man. <laughs> Young Spanish and I, Man. I beat out Miguel Hedro, who was Puerto Rican, to get it because my I spoke better than he did, so that's my claim to fame. That started it. That was 51 years ago. Oh, my God. Sorry. I went. You were a child. Oh, yes. You were a child. Mm -hmm. And then a, a little show I love called Applause. Yes. Which uh, And you played, you sang, She's No Longer a Gypsy. That's right. right. That great song, I, I by now, the way. I now have the, um, the book listing as the first openly gay homosexual character. Correct. Tommy yes, you were the hairdresser. Yeah, Tommy Toon in his book said it was Seesaw, but it wasn't. We opened before, and actually, before we opened, there was Coco, but it wasn't really yeah. as you know outed as it was. Yeah. But you know, we all no. Were kind Dwayne of Fox was super that. gay. Yes, he <laughs> was like a super gay, fabulous Broadway hairdresser. He went out boozing, and yeah. it was fun. It was yeah. like a big party. Yeah, yeah. And actually, prior to that, it it, it was uh, Oklahoma for Richard Rogers at Lincoln Center, which I oh. played Will Parker, and that was one of the highlights of my life wow. working with Richard Rogers. Wow, amazing. Great time. Um, and then a little show called Lorelei. Yes. Most of these shows are big hits, by the way. <laughs> Lorelei is like maybe a little, it's, it's a well, little, it, it ran, with Carol Well, it ran for a few months, and, but we had done a year's tour before we came into New right. York. Well, so. the, you've done a lot of touring. Yes. Yeah, you're, 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 you're like that. Me and the Lunts. And then there's a show called Hello, Dolly. Mm. You did the, the revival of Hello, Dolly. Yes. Right, opposite who? Yes, Carol Channing. Miss Carol Channing, who I know is a big part of You know her very yes. well. Yes, hello, everybody. I'm still alive. I'm 96. <laughs> <laughs> you were Cornelius. Yes. Yes. And okay, we'll get, we'll get that. Then 42nd Street. Now, this show you're doing, we're going to come back to this. You got yeah. a Tony nomination for 42nd Street. Yes. And yes. you uh, are doing a show all about 42nd Street. Yes. Celebrating 42nd Street. Um, of course, you were Billy Lawler, mm -hmm. and so you created that. A lot of stories there. And then Lacage, 
you were Alban. Yes. And you were Lumiere and Beating the Beast. Yes. You did. Then you directed Hello Dolly and choreographed it. And that's yes. when I first met you. But you don't yeah. remember, but I, I met you then. And and you did that one. So you directed Carol in '94. Yes, '94 yeah. at the La Fontaine. Yep. Yep. And then you did An Evening with Jerry Herman, yes. which is a really fun review. And then you were Roger Debris and the producers. Yes. You guys, all you people out there that want to be Broadway stars, think about what I just said. That is so incredible what you have done. And I loved every moment of every one of them. I truly, truly did. I love I that. never understand that in the theater, you know, that someone gets a hit and then they say, how can you do that eight times a week? That's what we train to yeah. do, yeah. to have a steady paycheck. To yeah. have your days free to do creative things, work with terrific people, and, yeah. and then that's, that's what we live our lives for. And that's only Broadway I mentioned, of course. I mean, that, those are just your Broadway credits, yes. but then there's a whole other thing beyond that, including Feinstein 54 Below. Yes. So let's talk about this. Yeah. How, why are you doing this show? Where did this come from? What, what, what are we going to get when we come see you well, on I Friday think, and Saturday I think at it's 7 time, p.m.? I think it's time to talk about 42nd Street. It was such a, a big part of my life and all the things that went on behind the scenes from the very beginning. So, you know, you'll get a lot of good stories and all the people, some of whom have passed yeah. on. Yeah. But, and also, you know, to talk about David Merrick and Gower Champion. David Merrick. Of course, Ga Tammy Grimes. I mean, huge. Mr. Mosh. You, you, you just said like three major huge names yes. right there. I mean, I'm sure there's like a hundred stories for each of those names. Yeah. Mr. Mosh, ever since I was a tiny little girl and saw my first Julian Mosh show, I've dreamed of the day when I might work with the King of Broadway. Tammy I, Grimes. I would love you just to do all of 42nd Street as every oh, character. I can do, isn't it funny? I can do the women better than I can do the men. <laughs> I can do, a, you know, I can do, hello, darling. I can do that, but basically I, I do the women's voices better. I guess being a tenor, that's what you get. <laughs> and so, actually I played Hello, Dolly, you know, playing the character down at the Wicks Theater in Florida. I played the character of Dolly. Oh, my God. And I had just one of the times of my life. Oh, my God. I forgot Louis Stadlin that happened. came down and played opposite me, one of my buddies. I forgot that happened. We had such a great time. So what do you think about Dolly being back? Oh, I love it. Are you kidding? It's, it's a great show. Yeah. Michael Stewart wrote such a beautiful book, Jerry Herman. You know, that score is just incredible. And Bette Midler is giving what I think is the performance of her life. Mm -hmm. I mean, she really, truly is. Mm -hmm. Are you giving a thumbs up to the casting of Bernadette Peters? Absolutely. Excited, okay. Absolutely. Bernadette well, you would Peters, know. I do, and Bernadette is a, a dear friend, and people forget that she came up in musical comedy Correct. theater, so she knows how to be funny and touching, and she looks absolutely terrific. Since you know that show so well, yeah. if you were going to cast another person in that part, yeah. who would you love to see play that role? Many people could do it. Tyne Daly would be mm. very good playing Dolly, Ooh. who's actually Irish. She right. would be a sensation. I wanted to do it with her, but she said she wouldn't do it until Carol died, and at this point, it's not going to happen. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, there's uh, uh, Patty LuPone. Yes. Would make a great Dolly. Yeah. She has the the strength and, and the chops to do it still. Christine Ebersole, again, yeah. they could alternate. <laughs> <laughs> War paint does Dolly. <laughs> you are, you, you're also a Broadway cheerleader. I mean, you're at the yes. theater all the time. You're at Broadway events. You're, you're such a big part of this community. What keeps you excited about it? And what, what is it like uh, seeing like new people come in? And you've seen it change so much over the years. Very exciting to see new people come in and I'm overwhelmed by the versatility of the young kids in the theater. Yeah. They can sing anything, they dance, they act. We just need the people to start writing things that show that. Mm. I think, uh, you know, there's a generational thing in our business, and I'm up for everything that's new and exciting, but, you know, this place is for everything. And in the old days, you know, they would say, they're going to do an Ethel Merman musical. Okay, now let's get Comden and Green to write that. Let's get Julie Stein. Let's get, and they put everybody together to create the show. Right. Now we have to kind of go in and fit whatever the product is. Mm -hmm. So they're not uh, necessarily taking advantage of the talent that's the right. So all of you young people out there, get busy, get your ideas, talk with your friends, and you put on your own show, you know. <laughs> Yeah. That'll get it going. Yeah. And start writing songs again. Right. I'm so, you know, I get overwhelmed by all the recitative stuff, you know. Yeah. Where, you know, in, in a musical, the dialogue goes, and the song does this. When the song doesn't do that, then just keep it as dialogue. Right. You know, just having rhythms and all of these, the things that don't make sense right. musically. I mean, I know it's a generational thing, but it still does work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I remember sitting in 
sing Sweeney Todd for the first time, and my God, those songs just swept over me. I, I get chills now mm. thinking about how exciting it was. Mm -hmm. Well, let's tell everyone let's, what happened on opening night of 42nd Street. Well, that was crazy. We got a call. We got a call that afternoon that we had to come to rehearsal. We'd been rehearsing for weeks, and Gower we knew was in the hospital. And Gower was your director. Yes, Gower Champion, and David Merrick, our producer, kept us, you know, doing the show with nobody in the audience night after night, and he would be sitting out there by himself, and the kids brought their teddy bears and dolls and put them in the first <laughs> rows, so we had an audience, and then finally he announced that we were going to do it, and you know, we had a, a preview or two, and then we opened, and uh, we knew Gower was not there, that he was in the hospital. And all the press was there, because back... Well, David Merrick was so brilliant, because right. Gower had died that afternoon, so we were called into rehearsal. Now, we had limousines hired, I mean, what a thing to do, and we'd been doing the show enough, we knew it. And uh, so we were brought to the theater, and David had security always at the theater. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get in without a name tag. So we got to the theater, and we didn't rehearse. We were just, and the show went great. And uh, we had a dozen curtain calls. And then suddenly all the press started running down the aisles, like in the movies. Mm. And what David had done, he had called all the press and said, if you don't put it in the late editions of the newspapers and the things, I'll make an announcement from stage that you can film me. So that's why they were all there. And of course, when David walked down on stage, it was shocking. You had no idea. We had no idea, but we thought, oh well, you know, you can never predict what David was going to do. Right. He was really one of the most, the most brilliant producer ever. And he walked out, and so well, I thought he was going to say, you know, Gower Champion, our director could not be here tonight, and right. I want to thank him for the. I, that's what. I, and instead, he held up his hands and he said, "This is tragic," which of course everybody laughed. And David Merrick, what's tragic about you know a dozen curtain calls? Right. And he said, Gower Champion died. He said, you don't understand, Gower Champion died this afternoon. Well, we all just, I mean, it was an audible gasp. And he turned around to hug Wanda, who we all know yeah. was having a fling with Gower, although mm -hmm. he was still married. Mm -hmm. And so then Jerry Orbach, thank God, dear Jerry, had the presence of mind to say, bring in the curtain. And when the curtain hit the floor, I flashed back to a, the many conversations I had with Gower, because mm -hmm. we rehearsed a week together before the company came in, so we became very close. And he told me that uh, during the 70s, he thought his uh, career was over, that wow. people didn't like what he was doing anymore. And uh, when he got a call from David Merrick to do 42nd Street, because he was an old-fashioned song and dance man, as I am, mm -hmm. and he understood that. And I always wanted to be at MGM, and Gower said, this will be our show to experience that. But anyway, so, when that happened, it, I'm not trying to get my mindset to, to get this correct. He said, my doctors told me not to do the show because it was stressful and his past experience with David Merrick weren't easy. He said, but Leroy, uh, well, to flash back, he said during the 70s, he tried to get with it. He went, walked the beaches, he uh, did the drugs. Uh, he tried to listen to the music and all of that, but he said, I'm just an old-fashioned song and dance man. So when his doctor said no, don't do it, he said, I had to, Leroy, because I don't want to be remembered as a has-been. Mm. And boy, did he go out. Wow. And at the opening, I cried. We were all just in shock. Yeah. But of course, then it's like you rewind the tape. We had a party to go to at the Waldorf right. Astoria. We only had one producer. We had a sit-down dinner with an orchestra. It's the <laughs> most fabulous wow. opening night party I've ever been to in my life. Wow. So we all walk in, and Gower is dead. Bob Fosse came up to me and said, quote, he looked at me and he said, that son of a bitch. He said, I filmed my death, and he had to still do me one better by doing it on the opening day. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the kind of stuff you're going to hear at Feinstein's 54 Below. <laughs> Friday and Friday Saturday, and Saturday, at Saturday, Saturday seven. night, October 6th and 7th <laughs> at 7 o'clock. And God knows what else is going to come out of my mouth. So come and find out. And I'm singing nothing but songs from the show. Fabulous. And there's a lot of great songs in that yeah. show. Harry Warren, Al Dubin. Yeah. Al Dubin actually passed away in 1945. No. Wow. And Harry Warren was alive when the show opened on Broadway. Wow. And David Merrick was asked, um, are, you, are you going to bring Harry Warren to the opening? He said, why? I paid Warner Brothers for the rights, and if he wants to buy a ticket, he can go to the box office like everybody else. <laughs> At wow. one point with 42nd Street, David Merrick had three companies running and was making a million dollars a week. He wow. was making a million dollars a week because he was 80s. the only producer. Yeah. I mean, incredible. And it made the front page of Variety. 
In the beginning, there was only one investor with David. When we got out of town, we got kind of mixed reviews. And David went to him and said, you know, I don't think that uh, your show is going to be a hit. I don't want you to lose money, so I'll buy you out. Wow. <laughs> and he did. One singular producer. Wow. Wow. He was a, an incredible man. Very clever. But did you, did you have enjoyable times with him? I did. Very okay. much so. First day of rehearsal, he said to me, you're going you're going to be very good in the show. <laughs> and I said, thank you, Mr. Merrick, because Carol Channing always called him Mr. Merrick. He said, don't call me Mr. Merrick. Call me David. I'm not your father. <laughs> well, I knew that, I, but I never called my father Mr. Reams. But anyway, <laughs> from that point on, I always called him David. And uh, I, I have many stories about David, which I will tell a lot that night, things, the shenanigans he did. And it was incredible. And by what he did on opening night, a lot of people thought, it was you know, taking advantage, but we all benefited by it, as well as the Gower Champion Estate. Mm. They made a lot of money, and we were on the front page of every newspaper yep. across the nation. You can't buy publicity like that. Yeah. It was a historic night. Hopefully, it will never happen again, right. but boy, was it historic. Wow. And that's the kind of stuff. Listen, we can I go on. It. I'm a walking I history book up hours. to a certain point. Do you think <laughs> applause could work now? That's uh, one of those shows. I love the score so much, and I always wonder. And you're you're a director, so yeah. do you think there's a way to make applause? I know I, they've tried over the years. I don't know. I don't know. I know that. Well, it's, I can't. It's all about Eve. Yes, everyone. It, it, it's musical. a good story, and I, I think if you did it in a period, I think you have to go back. Yeah, and they do try it to modernize a, it. Yeah, right? you kind of do it in a period. Of yeah. course, initially, you know, it w was so funny to be playing a part that was originated by Thelma Ritter in the movie. <laughs> I never thought that was going to happen. And also, I remember definitely we went to Baltimore, and when I went to the gay bar scene, oh, my God, there were, the audience was so silent. They didn't laugh at anything. And, of course, when she said, uh, Dwayne, how would you like to take two lonely ladies out in the town tonight? And he says, uh, oh, I can't. I've uh, got a date. She says, bring them along. <laughs> well, <laughs> big laugh, yeah. right? <laughs> right. So, yeah. you know, it was really something, and one of the reviews said, a lot of homo ho-hum. <laughs> homo ho-hum. Ho -ho homo <laughs> ho-hum. So, you know, but of course, once we got back to New York, and Penny Fuller made such a difference in the casting of that part, mm. I, I think that performance made the show what it was. Mm -hmm. And not that Diane McAfee wasn't wonderful. She was, but she was younger, and Penny was experienced and gave more of a, uh, uh, a conflict to mm -hmm. uh, the character that Lauren Bacall played, Margot Channing. So that combination worked. And I was a replacement. I oh. wasn't originally oh, I actually cast. didn't realize that. No, I came in as a replacement in rehearsal. Oh, okay. And uh, I mean, it's a, a long story, but I uh, was very upset that I didn't get the part. And uh, I was going to go back and do Julia Prowse's nightclub back, but it was a step backwards. Oh. And uh, I didn't want to do it. And I finally decided, no, I wouldn't go. I would, you know, stick it out. And I went on the... Uh, Ed Sullivan show as a Peter Gennaro dancer. But uh, in New Year's Eve, I, I told my now husband, Bob, I said, they really made a mistake. I should have had that part. And he had a bottle of champagne. And we toasted the next morning. They called and said they fired Garrett Lewis. And what could I come into rehearsal? Wow. And I only had like a week to catch up on everything. But were, you, were you scared to play a gay character? No, not at all. I didn't okay. even think about it twice. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people said, you have to be careful. You'll be typecast. I don't know why they said that. I've now worn a dress on high heels in three or four different <laughs> shows, but other than that, I'm still here. Uh, but no, I didn't think a thing about it. We're actors. That's why playing Dolly, I don't think we should be limited. Yeah. If a woman wants to play Professor Higgins and My Fair Lady, cut her hair and let her play it. I yeah. mean, you know, I think that's exciting. Yeah. That's what makes us different now. And, and also it brings a different take to the uh -huh. audience. Right. And, you know, in Shakespeare's day, there were no women on the stage, period. Right. As a matter of fact, I thought it would have been interesting to do Hello, Dolly! with an all-male cast. Mm. I would love to do that. If anyone out there is brave enough, mm -hmm. you know, I would love to, to attempt that. I think it would be quite interesting. What show did you do the longest? Uh, 42nd Street. Okay. How long were you in it? Uh, eight years. You were in it for eight years? Yes. Yes, I was. I did the L.A. Company and the Tokyo Company. Wow. And, uh, yeah, eight years. And it was a great job. But I got a workout. I didn't have to go to dance class or voice class. I was doing it every day. Yeah. And we had so much excitement. And of course, David Merrick was totally unpredictable and was very kind to me. I got a lot of exposure. You know, we did uh, We're in the Money on the Bob Hope special, on the Loretta Lynn special. Yeah. We did the 42nd Street on the Miss Universe pageant. 
And then in between, you know, I would go places. And when I was in L.A., I got to go on the Merv Griffin show. And so I got a lot of exposure, and it, it basically gave me the identity. Right. And uh, I'm very grateful for it. And the songs are so incredible. That's why that night at Feinstein's 54 <laughs> Below, October 6th and 7th at 7 o'clock, I'm going to be doing all those wonderful songs, which yeah. you can't do better than that. Now, the reason I'm making fun doing all of this, so that's what Carol Channing used to do. She would go on the morning radio shows, you know, on seven. They would say, well, a storm is coming, but not at my theater. You see, I'll be there. <laughs> she would go into the whole <laughs> spiel. She was really so incredible. I, I learned from the masters, truly. Oh, truly. Leroy Reams, I adore you. And I uh, adore you, Paul. Thank everyone you Everyone needs me. to go to Find Science 54 Below and learn about those eight years. Yes. And more and hear all these great songs. Uh, James Falwell, musical direction. So it's uh, 7 p.m., the 6th and 7th, Friday, this Friday and Saturday. What do you uh, choose for dinner there? What do you like to eat? At oh, everything is Everything's good. Everything's good. They have, no, the, the kitchen is incredible. Come earlier, though, to have dinner yeah. because it's really terrific. Don't come close to showtime and then try to eat during the show. Yeah. Come a little <laughs> early and really enjoy. And the wait staff and the people who work there are all they so are. nice and incredible. Absolutely. I it's the best there. cabaret in New York. Yeah, absolutely. Thank and you. when I met Michael Feinstein how many years ago in L.A., who, by the way, worked for Harry Warren, before oh, he wow. became rich and famous, yeah. And I know, I, I just saw pictures of his apartment, Michael well, Feinstein's apartment he's No, selling. no apartment during his townhouse. He took two townhouses yeah, and saw. put them together. Nice job, Michael. And then also, uh, when I met Michael, he was playing piano at Rosemary Clooney's party because he was working next door with the Gershwin widow getting the, the Gershwin stuff all together. And uh, so anyway, I, I met him not knowing that one day I was going to be working for him. <laughs> but anyway, it's a good thing. He's a great guy, and I'm happy about that. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. So great to see you. We have to do this more often. Yes. And if things work, if it's four below, I'll repeat the show. If not, I'll talk about another show. And come in, and we'll hear all the dish and do the songs. I want to hear all your dish. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow at 5 o'clock with another amazing guest. Bye.